What if Kobe Bryant was a rookie in LeBron James' star-studded 2003 draft class? Today, we get the answer to that question in our GOAT series as we find out what happens if Kobe stays as the same draft pick, 13, but is taken by the Boston Celtics instead of their real-life pick, Marcus Banks. On the Celtics, can Kobe rewrite history? How many MVPs can he steal from LeBron? How many titles can he take from the Lakers and Shaq, who no longer have Kobe? It is our mission to find Find out those answers so what is up guys mike here and today we are on video two of our goat series where we determine who is the best to ever play in each and every era in a five season span with the boston celtics and kobe bryant in the early 2000s immediately we have an incredible roster in play with paul pierce and antoine walker two big pieces however we also have some big problems spoiler alert on steph's run through this era go watch that video you have three seconds three two one link in the description this is our second GOAT series video, and in video number one, Steph won four MVPs and four titles. That is wild, and it is going to be tough to see if Kobe can outpace him as we only have five seasons. I'm a giant Kobe fan. I want Kobe to win this whole thing if he can, which means there's no time to play around. We're able to trade Antoine Walker immediately and a few other players for Pau Gasol, who in real life has yet to make an all-star game at this point in time, but also in real life would later team with Kobe Bryant to win two NBA championships i can see the future pick and rolls post-ups confetti smacking pow in his virtual face we now have a big three before the term was even coined but of course we're not finished we need to play the long game so we shed all of our big contracts and sign james posey and reggie evans and suddenly i've got to say our season one roster is looking pretty solid while trading away everyone we were also able to grab braven knight and greg ostertag basketball reference does not have the pronunciation to this man's name i also thought he was like seven foot five he's seven two that's tall for the era i guess seven foot two born 1970 is like Wemby now there is a reason that steph was able to grab four titles and four mvps in this era the question is can kobe do the same and as we start simming through season one and for all the new viewers to this series the goat race rules are popping up on the screen right now however i'll also include a timestamp down below to the full explanation we don't want to be doing too much explaining though as season one has us looking very nice at 35 and 10. we're already leading the Eastern Conference. In fact, we're better than everyone. Real Life 2004 saw the Pistons win the championship. In 2K, they are currently sitting at number six. The Hawks are at number two. They do have LeBron James assassin, Jason Terry. I will say though, the only guy in the East I'm currently a little bit afraid of is prime Tracy McGrady on the Magic. They're third. He's the leading voter in the East while Kobe is not even named an all-star. Steph was the MVP. That means we need to lock in this championship. I'm not sure if we're winning MVP season one. So before we move on we do have to move the big o and knight which is kind of a big deal as we're trading two of our starters from the eastern conference leading team so our safety is jeff foster and we don't want mo williams starting after this that's a problem we need to fix so we do trade mo and get a young passing star star in jose calderon in 2009 jose calderon shot 98 percent from the free throw line that's a record by the way in real life jose calderon stayed overseas after the 2004 draft but in this reality he is in the NBA and becomes a mini what if in himself as we keep going in the sim and I've got to say are we playing a little bit worse we reached the end 61 wins would have sounded great before the year started now though I'm not I'm, I'm not so sure the awards I will say are a disaster for us in year one we love the 61 wins we love Pau's second team all NBA I stuttered on that because I didn't really even love it what we don't love is Shaq with his monster 38 and 18 year as a solo bachelor without Kobe and Kobe's doesn't even win rookie of the year Melo beats us for rookie of the year Pau we're happy for you but geez Kobe averaged 27 points a game in this one. His clear lack of rebounding and assists hurt him in season one, but man, no All-NBA and no Rookie of the Year is tough, so it is clear. We need to get our GOAT resume going. And first up is the Hornets, who feature a young All-Star in Baron Davis. These are the New Orleans Hornets, not the Charlotte Hornets, that traded Kobe away in real life, although it doesn't seem to matter until we need to jump into game three already. But before we face off against LeBron, first, we're going to try to take down Anthony Black, as if if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe and turn 
turn on post notifications to catch the rest of the GOAT series, trust me, there is going to be a ton of drama. Also, personally, I do love setting big goals. So our goal is not only to get to 1 million subscribers, but on the way, we're going to take down NBA players with YouTube channels as our targets on the way to 1 mil. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so we can beat Anthony. For now, though, let's jump back into the video. So while we are a bit nervous jumping into game three, I'm excited to do face cams. Hey, what's up? How you doing? We're immediately watching as there's Kobe Bean Bryant. One for one shooting. We love to see it. On the other end, we do have a Jamal Mashburn who with Steph was pretty great. But on this side, Pau Gasol with the stop. And we have a Jose Calderon on Pau Gasol. There's Pau getting fed, baby. Now that is some kind of Spanish connection. It's a two point game. We need Kobe. The Bean feeds Pau. I can't stop saying Kobe Bean Bryant, but Pau Gasol, the bucket left hand. Whew. Pau Gasol is driving to the rim yet again. What's his nickname? The Jose to Pau connection needs something. Pau right in the... I'm trying to think. As Baron Davis though chokes, we might win as I was trying to brainstorm nicknames. Sometimes that's how life is. Kobe at the foul line needs to make both. First one back rim, but in. How do you feel about Kobe in a Celtics jersey? One and two. As we're watching Kobe take this clutch free throw. Kobe bricks! We need the stop. There's Baron Davis. He's... Mashburn! Ah! I mean... Nice. Yes. Solid victory. In game four, the sim is no problem. We are on to round two against the menace. That is a prime Jason Kidd. The early 2000s Nets made the finals twice in real basketball. And in our sim, the series proves to be a tough one immediately. We do jump into game one where we watch Pau continue to stalk. He is extremely dominant down low. And then there is Jose Calderon with a huge three that I will admit was completely unexpected. Game one wasn't too bad. So we're feeling good headed into game two. And there is that man, Jose Calderon again for three. That gives us a one point lead on this play. Rookie Kobe is not showing us he's really going to take over. Then Jason Kidd gives the Nets a lead. Kobe misses a clutch shot when down three and Kidd isos, goes to work, misses, but grabs his own miss and puts game two away like that. That shot was absurd. This series continues. And in game four, we get more gameplay, but we get more Nets blowout. Luckily, none of that matters. As we come storming back, we run all the way to game seven where we're jumping into this. We are watching as Kobe Bryant brings it down the court. I thought I'd have a bit of time to intro for you boys, but we're just watching bricks. They're building a house. Game seven, one minute, eight seconds left. Jason Kidd drives and he gets fouled by Jose Calderon and things are looking bleak. So we'd really love if Jason Kidd missed here. He does not miss. On the other end, down five. We're desperate for a bucket. And there's Pau. I don't, that's, okay. This is apparently a Pau Gasol sim. On the other end, we need a stop here. And there's Jason Kidd. And there's a stop. Jose Calderon has been proving to be the X factor on our team as Paul Pierce just dancing to the basket. We need another stop though. Jason Kidd right to the basket. Did Pau get the block? Please, please pass to Kobe. He's not passing to Kobe. He takes it all by himself. That's ridiculous. Pau! No, no, yes! Yes! As we're about to watch this final shot, I need two things from you guys. One, who is going to be our third GOAT candidate? Who is going to be the next player to compete with Steph Curry and Kobe Bryant in this race? The only qualifications for that are the player needs to be a top 20 player in NBA history or has a chance to be a top 20 player in NBA history. Remember that as anyone in the top 20, that is not LeBron or Jordan because we are saving LeBron and Jordan. As we watch, hopefully the Nets. There it is. Terry Kittles from, yes! We're good, we are good. Nothing is easy in this scenario though, and the Eastern Conference Finals may immediately bring us two wins. We may immediately be on top of the world, but who is holding that world? Think on that as the sharpshooting Michael Red connects on two threes, and then we just watch as our go gets destroyed by Ray Ray. Is that Jesus Shuttlesworth to us? I don't know. Down two, Kobe can still save us. We're going to Jose Calderon though. Who? Bricks, he bricks. So we do take a tough L, but we. We are still up headed into another gameplay where I'll be honest, we do put this away. We just need 98% free throw shooter Jose Calderon to not miss three free throws in a row. Fortunately, in this game, Pau Gasol saves us. Kobe, we'd love to see you step up a bit more in these games. The perfect time though for that is the NBA Finals where we are playing the San Antonio.
Antonio Spurs, of course. It's Tim Duncan, it's Manu Ginobili, it's Tony Parker, and it's us taking a 3-1 series lead. Watch out, Steph. We may have lost the MVP. We may have lost Rookie of the Year to Carmelo Anthony, but Kobe is coming for that title run, and so we're jumping in. Also, before we continue, I tried to give away an NBA Finals package on this channel, but the winner never answered me, so I'm going to double the giveaway here and give two people that are subscribed to this channel VIP packages to the NBA All-Star Game as a thank you. I thought doubling the giveaway here was the best way I could think of to solve this problem after someone didn't answer such a big giveaway. I want to make sure this giveaway happens so that I can show my thanks to you guys. So now, two VIP packages to the NBA All-Star Game. I'm going to pick the winners on February 1st to make sure both people answer. This is a correction to the last time where I accidentally said December 1st despite the video being posted on December 5th. I hope you understand I'm trying my best here in this situation. This is the best solution I could think of. For now, let's get back into the video. It is game five of the NBA Finals. We are down by four with a minute 45 left. We are not looking great at all as Tony Parker is so wide open and Tim Duncan. I thought for a second that we were about to start talking about how Tony Parker as a young player didn't have the best mid-range game. He ended up working on it. It was a whole thing. As Kobe though goes behind the back, makes it. We're down by four. We're down by four in shambles. According to basketball reference, Jose Calderon's nicknames are Numero Ucho and Mr. Catering. How's our meal ticket? E.T. and Kung Pao. Continuing on uh, in the most important game of the season, Kobe Bryant gets the ball. He has a chance to actually redeem himself completely in the season and be a hero as he takes the worst shot ever. Just the worst shot ever. All right, 50 seconds left. We're probably losing this and probably going to season two. We're intentionally fouling. Casually waiting for the streamers to be dropped on our heads. Drain a three, I don't know. Kobe, add to your stats, that's a nice shot. Let's go, boy. Nice looking shot. Paul Pierce, brick, and we lose. That was a rough one, that was a rough one. Seven point loss, back at it against the San Antonio Spurs. Last time was not an incredible experience, let's be honest. This time we're up by three, we're smiling. Hopefully, Kobe right away? I thought he was draining. We have to avoid Tim Duncan as much as possible. Kobe directly guarding the man who just scores right above him. It turns out if you just put your hands up and someone shoots right over, it goes in. There's Paul Pierce again, open. Drains, drains. Can you hear my voice that I don't believe in Paul Pierce? I really do not believe it. Lose and go home. There's Tim Duncan, the only man we don't want with the ball. This is a prime Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward of all time, as he just goes to work, scores right on us. Okay, Kobe feeds James Posey. I don't know about it, but that's a wide open shot on prime Tim Duncan, who doesn't even react. As there's Tony. Dude, Jose with the defense, and there's Powell with the defense. Making it a two possession game with only a minute left. Is massive as Kobe puts up a... I don't even know what kind of shot that was. As there is Steven Jackson again. All right, at least he doesn't ISO Kobe. And no. What? How? He's a, a menace. Just about two minutes left in this one as Paul Pierce, you could be a hero, but there's Kobe. Kobe? Let's go. Okay, okay. We really need Mr. Catering to step up. Dude, yo, oh my, like. That was disgusting. Kobe on the other end? That's not what we... There's a prime Tim Duncan on James Posey. He's stepping back though. Okay, okay. That's a turnover, come on. That's so tough, that's so tough. We just, we can't get a rebound. Is this even Kobe's fault, to be honest? Down five though. All right, now it's Kobe's fault. Are you kidding me? And Steven Jackson just, no way. He makes that! And there we go, two seconds left. We lose by seven points, okay. Then to top this all off, we lose game seven in the sim, and Kobe goes into this off season showered with criticism by me, by me, by me and us, are we all? Kobe, how could you? In Kobe's real rookie season, he infamously airballed four shots against the Utah Jazz in his final playoff game of that year, with the game completely on the line, and he let resident loser Carl Malone advance to the second round. I will just say, Kobe as a whole, your rookie year was underwhelming. We can admit that. Kobe's career highs here were nothing to write home about. If we compare them to Steph's all-time career highs on the leaderboard, we can see what we are fighting for. We can also see we don't really want to overreact. The score 
scoring numbers are kind of close and we went over 60 games with this kobe led roster and so we're going to mainly work with this core in the off season we don't want to overreact so we moved jeff foster for a promising young hidu turkle a man who was a key part in the orlando magic's 2009 championship run in real life and we also signed a great young wing in gerald wallace who's an in real life all-star then we grab antonio mcdice to end this off season paul pierce pal gasol still on the roster what we're trying in year two is pal gasol at the center position if this works out we can build a more modern day roster maybe put a more defensive better player than antonio mcdice at the four spot if not we could panic and stick pal at the power forward spot and trade for a center the regular season gives us what i'll say i guess is a promising situation we do love a good 35 and 10 record in theory with that said that is exactly what we did last season at least kobe is an all-star this year so with a 35 and 10 record i feel very comfortable keeping this the boys are gelling we keep simming and i will just be honest yikes what's going on we're winning we win a few games but when it's all said and done we end up with 58 wins from a 35 and 10 mark as it is tim duncan the big fundamental who was named mvp over kobe you know the media was all in this voting when the big fundamental is winning over kobe bryant mainstream awards i just want kobe to succeed in year two kobe is second team all nba and he did average 29 points per game he is not first team all nba though and if we pull up the overall accolade leaderboards all we can do with kobe is try to make first team all defenses to beat steph it's that and go for the four pete that has never been done before and we can also set several high scoring records in terms of individual achievements and amazingly our first test is Allen Iverson, former NBA MVP, who we actually handle pretty easily. Bring out the broom, guys. Do we have the applications ready? In game four, we are up one with a minute and a half left until Allen Iverson drives to the basket and makes a nice end one on pal. What can I say? This man's a former MVP. It's Kobe's time to shine. Only on the other end, we fail to give the ball to him at all. Gerald Wallace just takes it, doesn't want to pass it, takes the worst shot ever and drains it. We're up three. And there is Kobe being Bryant with the massive steal and put away dunk. Broom man get in here and we've got a sweep we strut into the second round against star shooting guard and draft class rival Dwayne Wade and immediately we give home court advantage away not exactly how we want to start game three versus the heat it is fun to watch Dwayne Wade as he bricks and we are coming down the other end with a minute and 10 seconds left and we're feeding Pau Gasol for the dunk that is an easy one Again, remember, the player with the most comments who fits the criteria of a top 20 player of all time in NBA history, or could be, is going to be the player that we do next. So make sure to comment down below as Pau Gasol ties the game. Dwayne Wade directly versus Kobe, posting him up. This is what history is made of as Dwayne Wade with the footwork and just... No! Why? I gotta stop saying no like that. No. But anyway... <laughs> but anyway... Down by two. We need a basket. We're going to Pierce. We're going to Pierce. Paul Pierce takes a step back and just bricks. Why? Why, Paul Pierce? Kobe looks angry. Kobe's with me. There is a chance that he misses. This is Lamar Odom. We could get Lamar Odom here and make this a Kobe, Lamar, Pow whole thing. But instead, we get a dope Kobe dap up with Dwayne Wade as we take a four point loss. Except, are the playoffs supposed to be this easy? We not only moonwalk past the Heat after this, but then in the Eastern Conference Finals, instead of focusing on flight itineraries to Orlando or some sort of Disney World schedule that gets you to see every single park in one day, we instead go through broom guy applications as we sweep. Prime Tracy McGrady. That's why you're a what if T-Mac. Hopefully this never backfires in our face. Let's keep trash talking him though. Kobe was always better than you. San Antonio Spurs are up next. It is the NBA Finals. It is year two. This is our time for revenge. This is what life is all about. The comeback story. Only this time, it is us who fall down two to one and then in the game four gameplay. I'm hopeful to be able to show it to you guys and live react, but we never come close enough for me to talk more about it. Let's scrub it from our minds. At this point, we are down three to one. We do have Kobe Bryant though, so we are live reacting. Game five, right before we jump into this playoff game though, I do want to remind you guys, we are in a current battle against an NBA player here. So if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video and we can continue on our road game five spurs this is where just we need our redemption arc as kobe really misses can this not happen we don't need it to happen like this who is guarding eldon brand because we might trade you mcdice yeah i mean you're pretty easy to trade kobe please my man feeds a wide open paul pierce that's in that is it 
Dude, no way. No, no, no. Okay. Yu Turkaloo is a promising young player for our organization, but why is he guarding Tim Duncan in the clutch? 33.3 seconds left. Tim Duncan can tie the NBA Finals here. We just want to close this game. He doesn't make it easy. He makes it. Sometimes life isn't easy. Sometimes we need to step up to the challenge, Kobe. Driving. Finding. Gerald Wallace. Miss, and we win San Antonio Spurs. Let's get a stop. Jose Calderon, the caterer, goes to the meal ticket. Tim Duncan over, right over him. How did he miss? Hop, his hair looking a bit whiter after that one. As long as Jose Calderon, who, if we remember, holds the NBA record for free throw percentage in a season, makes both. Spurs break, this game is over. And there's Tony Parker, he can't shoot. And he does not. GG's, it's good to take one. We needed one win to start. We take game five, and then game six gives us a very close sim where we almost jump in, but we do not and take it. Then amazingly, in game seven, we are watching where can it be? We blow the Spurs out and take Kobe's first NBA championship as he is also named NBA Finals MVP, adding a massive, massive number one to his GOAT resume as we are only going to build from here. We can four peat. We have one out of four completed. We can beat Steph in another way. Sorry, Steph, I'm coming for you. Kobe's coming for you. We're coming for you. With all this said, I feel like I can't make too many drastic moves still with the champions in place. We did only win 58 games. It also has to be accounted for though that we are very, very young. That player progression is gonna hit. It's also at this time where I am going to reveal to you our plan to betray Paul Pierce in the future. It might happen. It might. We might have to just backstab the man. The thing is, though, if we can't take down Steph's wild four MVP mark, we still want to try to grab three MVPs while also setting scoring records on the GOAT leaderboard. That is where Kobe can truly leave his mark here. So for us, we want to break 58 points, 21 field goals made, and 20 free throws made. Kobe needs to own those. That steals record would also be nice. Which means in the offseason, moving with precision, we grab Andy. Andrew Bynum from the draft and Andre Blatch. Those are both real life players. While Andrew Bynum at one point in his life was the key starting center for the Los Angeles Lakers. We now have a great bench center as well as we signed Keith Bogans to a three-year deal that would see him to the end of this scenario, which is nice. We're now in season three officially where the problem is if you look at the rest of the players around the league with me, you can see that Kobe is the number six best player in the world at this point. What I will say though is the rest of my roster looks kind of underwhelming with all these other mega stars not on my team the question is do we betray pierce just kidding or am i really we have a lot of near 80 overalls without a fourth big star we're going to look for that at the all-star break at the trade deadline as for now we begin this season terribly really really bad i actually stop the simulation in january for us because we can't take any more of this this is season three we need to start winning right now which means i trade for the man tight Jason Chandler. How the modern NBA thing may have worked. Maybe with another wing player, maybe with Jordan. I'll try that modern NBA, but with Pau Gasol, wasn't paying off enough. Will this Tyson Chandler trade work with Pau at Power Forward? Find out next time on right now, as it does. We win three straight games. We're a different team. At the All-Star break, all of our big three are All-Stars, and we are creeping up on that first place Toronto Raptors, who now have rich, um, superstar Richard Jefferson. Overall, this season, we're very improved, and we really ramp it up in the second half of the year. Chandler comes up big. Unfortunately, though, this is Tim Duncan's MVP again? Kobe has yet to win one. Steph won four. Kobe is first team All-NBA this season, which is amazing. However, when we look at his stats, it's very clear. He does have a dominant secondary stat. He's not a passer. He's not averaging 10 assists a game and he's not averaging 10 rebounds per game. What I will say though is Steph won a lot of those MVPs getting those assists. We want that four peat though and we want those scoring records. Next season, I know the MVP is coming. This season, I know we need to get to two out of four titles of our four peat to match Steph in that way. We've got momentum too. We are the defending champs with now first team all NBA Kobe and we show the world right away. Do not mess with us. Broom guy. 4-0 sweep versus the New York Knicks, of course. Haven't reached the NBA Finals since when? Did I just hear the word 1999? Well, at least you won a title. Oh, wait. Not since 1973? In the second round, it's looking like it's the same. It's looking like the Miami Heat are the New York Knicks of this scenario. Two wins in a row at home. Four titles coming soon for us. Except, here we go. Jumping into game three again. Hopefully, we get some new Kobe Bryant action in year three. This is a new Kobe. It's looking great. 
I thought that shot was so in his pow! Dunks right on Lamar Odom. We do need a stop, and Dwayne Wade just goes directly at Kobe every single time, it looks like. But there's Kobe with the stop! Kobe, fast break! feeds Paul Pierce again. The Kobe Bryant, Paul Pierce gameplay connection has been magnificent. Instead, we have Lamar Odom driving for the, it's not the win, it's the lead for one point. That's, why? Why? Brember at the line. Already missed one, second one is good. Two point game, 20 seconds left. Boston Celtics have a chance to take the lead, but instead Paul Pierce, wait, nope. We can't take the lead. Paul Pierce with the end one. Did anyone doubt Paul Pierce? Did anyone doubt Jose Calderon? It is weird watching Paul Pierce knowing that I, that we might, be, you know, betray him and everything. Miami Heat, chance to win, a chance to crush our dreams. They dribble the clock entirely down. They're going to Dwayne Wade. He's taking it for the game. Yes. Dwayne Wade, big brick, big brick. Bring out the brooms after game four. There's one thing you can say about us. It's our courts are immaculately clean. On those clean courts, bring on the number one seed Toronto Raptors as it is clear. Tyson Chandler has transformed our team and really all of our lives. We're on fire and even though we lose a game early in this series, we find ourselves up 3-1 where we watch as none other than Tyson Chandler is just a monster. Chandler dominates everyone while helping lead us to the NBA Finals where, shocker, it is our annoying Uncle Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs. This is our season though. We strike them down twice. Then game three is very different. We watch as Kobe fails us in real time while Tim Duncan looks like the real GOAT and MVP. Just painful to watch. Jose Calderon even connects on a mega four point play here for us. This one isn't over until Kobe isolates, rises up, brick. Brick, I think I just felt my back break with the sound of that rim shattering. We do win game four, which means we can win back-to-back -back titles as we jump into game five. We are down by one point. We have a chance to take the lead now as we feed Pau Gasol. Jose Calderon to Pau Gasol has been a connection in this. That is, I don't want to say we're trailblazers in the European basketball scene but we might create world peace. On the other end, San Antonio Spurs. We have him locked up with Kobe. That is locked down defense. We can't get, oh my, you have to be kidding me, Tyson Chandler. Ellen Brand just stole, just stole. I'm going to tell you. See this? There was two of them. Where are Tyson Chandler's? Other end, oh, what? Not Tim Duncan, not again. There's Duncan. He just shoots right over. 12.7 seconds left. We need a stop. We probably win the championship. It's that simple, really. Spurs don't have a great... Parker, that is a deep miss. Deep miss. He was open. You miss it. Thank you for the win. Thank you. Back-to-back -back NBA championships. Kobe, Bean, Bryant over the San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> What's happening? Tony Parker. Just what? We just won the championship on the San Antonio Spurs court and Tony Parker just jumped in celebration with us. As we most importantly though, win a second championship with Kobe Bryant. Kobe is also finals MVP, added to the GOAT leaderboard. We can four peat. I've been saying that a lot and I meant it right away. However, I knew it was a very tall task. With two titles suddenly though, things are looking a lot better. So we take this trophy back to Boston where Kobe jumps on the Boston parade mic and says, just like the British, Paul Pierce, must leave this city. Just kidding. But Kobe and Pierce are not happy with each other. They were even bickering it out in the 2K gameplay. We need to unleash Kobe as a GOAT, which means let's unlock his scoring. I happen to see that we could trade Paul Pierce for one of the best wing defenders of this era, as well as a very solid three-point shooter in Shane Battier. We also pick up fan favorite white chocolate Jason Williams. We're going to let Jason Williams run the point over Jose Calderon for at least one season here. He might finish out this simulation for us. This does feel like a roster that can both win games at a high rate and get Kobe 81 points scored in a single game. So as long as we win games, I really think Kobe is going to be putting up big time numbers. And as we start the sim, I'll say I'm a little nervous. Only I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be at all. We start just Tom cruising right through this thing. Finally, in year four, we are an improved team from year one. 37 wins, 10 losses. We already have no chance at the wins record, which is tough seeing as Steph set it in his go race. Feels like Kobe is the younger brother who had the gifted older brother going first in this race. Whatever. I need a sneak peek to see if Kobe can win the MVP here. And I am ecstatic to see. He's averaging almost 
almost 38 points a game with this new strategy. That has to be enough for MVP as long as we win enough games. So we're gonna keep going and as we watch, I will think that 68 wins is enough. You can bet your lucky stars. Whew. Kobe is finally an MVP for us in year four. I'm breathing with relief. Breathing with relief. Did not want to have zero MVPs on this leaderboard. I'm not sure where two MVPs will put Kobe in this GOAT race. I think Larry Bird probably will get three. He might get five. Overall for this year, before looking at the playoffs, we do want to see Kobe led the league by almost 10 points per game as 38.4 points per game is no slouch in this GOAT race. That is an all-time high for points per game in a season. I wonder if anyone will beat that. Kobe also had a big time 60 points and 22 field goals made goat leaderboard things no big deal who are we kidding it's a huge deal to us i love it our reward for all of this though is dwayne wade and the heat in the first round they may have been inventing load management this is prime dwayne wade so while we're confident in mvp kobe's team we're somehow also watching game one we're just watching here as kobe goes one-on-one -on -one against wade to end this game and just destroys him kobe scores multiple times he ends up clamping up wade he's able to feed tyson chandler for an alley oop when it's all said and done kobe brown is the star of this series. Sorry, Dwayne Wade. Then in game two, Kobe has 47 and Jay will has 20 assists. This series might look extremely close in the sim, but in the end, it's not a real sweat. We advance and in round two, it begins to look like the Orlando Magic are no match as well. They have prime Tracy McGrady, but we already know that is Kobe Bryant's brother. With that said, we are jumping into game three where we watch as Tracy McGrady teaches us a lesson in humility and how to play basketball. Prime T-Mac just completely takes over over. He is an all-time what if. He is absurdly dominant on the court. I would love to do a series with him one day. We do jump into game four and luckily there is Kobe silencing all of his doubters. Not me. Could it be me? With a three-pointer, we take a three to one series lead only. The magic will not go away. Orlando Magic with a prime Tracy McGrady. I love Tracy McGrady. I really would love to do him in a series in this. As we watch though, Kobe go right at him. Can Kobe score? No, he feeds Powell though. They get the pick. T-Mac right on Kobe. Ooh, he misses. He misses, but that is a foul. T-Mac sings them both. One point game, Kobe with the ball. Kobe needs to be MVP Kobe here. And he is floating it up. That is just a horrible shot. But Tyson Chandler, yeah, that might be Delonte West, I believe. As Kobe almost gets the steal, but instead Trace McGrady is wide open and just is a hero under 30 seconds left i'm really hoping kobe gets the ball here and he does it's kobe versus t-mac 1v1 how Gasol? i cannot believe that went in i cannot believe that went in somehow kobe never doubted at all just skips to the bench but here's prime t-mac versus kobe bryant we're trying to lock down under 10 seconds left t-mac isoing Force him to tough. No, no, no. <gasps> Tyson Chandler! Roll back the replay here. T Mac actually blew by Kobe, and Tyson Chandler saved the day, man. He saved the day. He's got three of these. One point game. Tyson Chandler, it's 2.6 seconds left. They don't have a timeout, though, so they have to make this full court shot. They do not make the full court shot. We win. Yes! Tyson Chandler ends up being the hero. You know what they say, directly call players out and they will immediately perform. We're on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Three Pete is still in the air where we're playing the Nets. Again, we're watching game one, but I will say we're very happy to do so. We are up four where I will be honest. Kobe sucked, he just sucked. Shane Battier luckily just drains a gigantic ISO three that does win us this game and the series as this was the Nets best chance at beating us. MVP Kobe did not perform in this game, it's okay. He's been nervous. In the sim, he's been an animal, and none of this matters because in the NBA Finals is where Kobe can prove that he is that guy. Finally, we have a new team, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Only, I don't like this team. In the first four games, the Timberwolves win three of them. With our three-peat on the line, we're jumping into game five as it looks like a prime Kevin Garnett is a serious problem. Minute 10 seconds left, we're jumping in off of a missed free throw, and immediately Shane Batty is wide open for three. Bang! Mike Breen, bang! Jason Williams finding him. We're only down by one in the NBA Finals versus both a prime Kevin Garnett who has the ball right now and Dwight Howard. KG turn around and there's Dwight. Oh, Tyson Chandler is a monster! Kobe has a chance. Kobe with the crazy layup, but there's Chandler again? In a world where there is Pau Gasol, Dwight Howard, and Kevin Garnett, all three. 
Tyson Chandler has answered the call. Now we just need to stop Kevin Garnett, who is essentially Tim Duncan replacement, you know? They're posting, there's KG right over Pau Gasol. What? Okay, Jason Williams and Kobe love each other. Draw no place. No fight in between them. Now we have Jason Williams, who's caught in the post, but there's Kobe for three. Yes! Yes! It's the NBA Finals. We are up by two after that spectacular Kobe three. Kevin Garnett on the other end fades away. That was so smooth. That was so smooth. I can't even. We're moving on to the uh, overtime section of this. It is a tie game. One minute, 40 left. Kobe Bryant throws a lob to Tyson Chandler. We need a stop, though. And Kevin Garnett is very, very difficult to stop. There's the fadeaway again. That is great defense. Thank you. Thank you. Kobe takes the pick from Tyson Chandler. There's Kobe all the way. No, he feeds Chandler, who feeds Battier. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful basketball. We actually take this one by nine points. Pretty easy win. Here we are, game six. As we watch a Jones three-pointer fall, and we are down by four points with just a minute and 40 left. Timberwolves up by four. They have a chance to put this away as Wally Zerviak. Zerbiak doesn't miss. Six point game. Kobe is doing fancy dribbling makes. I was going to say makes a wide open shot just because I believed, but luckily after he bricks, they take a horribly quick shot. Kobe to the rim, fouled, fouled, fouled. 49.2 seconds left. We're down by six points, so this is going to be very tough to come back. Kobe makes the first. We're hanging in this sim. Our only chance to beat Steph Curry directly is to get a 4P. Kobe does make the second. We're down by four points. We need a stop as we foul Dwight Howard. I don't hate it. It's basically hack a shack, fright a Dwight. Got it. As he misses the first and misses the second. Let's go. Four point game, four point game. 40 seconds left. We can do this. We can do this. Kobe. Feeds what? Yo, Chandler is out of control. We just need to get a stop. It's a two point game. Kevin Garnett is driving on Pal. Is that even a foul? Is that even a foul? Is that even a foul? Play it back. What do we think? What do we think? Comment down below. It is a three point game. We have a chance to tie if we can just Kobe though. What is he? How does that go in? Yes, yes. Timberwolves at the line, make the first. Make the second. We're down by three points here. We can tie this game. We can three-peat. The amount of Chandler. Jason Williams with the make. And it's a three. And it's a three. The NBA Finals are tied at 107. All we need is a stop to send this to overtime. Please do not give the ball to Kevin Garnett. Please. Please. Ball immediately goes to Kevin Garnett. No. No. Dude chance to win this as we go to Pau Gasol no 4-3 why 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 would we take a three-pointer with Pau Gasol to win the NBA finals as yet again we get celebrated on man I'm feeling the pain of Gerald Wallace as he's clearly crying and just like that there goes any chance of our four Pete. We could still win three titles. We could still win another MVP and we could still add a lot to that goat leaderboard. A disappointing loss. However, comment below what goat you want to see next and in what era. We're all in this together. I'm going to go with whoever is chosen the most, whether it be Will, Shaq, Bird, Magic. Again, just remember we're saving LeBron and Jordan for around the 10 mark. Make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you do not miss a single video of this goat series. I can't wait to see who you guys pick and what era we're playing in next and with that said i don't think we should really touch the starting lineup to be honest in other words we make a move for marcus pfizer looking at our lineup before we start year five we do look i think really great that belief is immediately confirmed when we win a casual 27 games in a row is that a record in the goat race we will pop up on the screen what steph's highest record was and summing up year five yes we make the all-star team yes we are just crushing everyone yes we win 72 games and there he is Kobe Bryant, your year five MVP. If you don't win MVP in the GOAT race in year five, I'm gonna call that embarrassing. We might even wanna shame someone that doesn't win. Just get no, no shame in, but we'd get close to it. Speaking of close, remarkably, we are watching game two of the playoffs yet again. However, this game two is just a domination. Tyson Chandler with the filthy block, and there is our boy, Jose, with the big time three. We would never betray that, man. That's a win. We continue this momentum with another 
sweep. You don't think we need a broom guy? Trust me, we do. And also trust me that in round two, I'm very nervous for what could happen as we're jumping into game one, down three against LeBron James, who has been remarkably quiet, but now we'll see what he's got. 140 EF, it is year five. In our final face hit, Kobe with the fade misses. Pow! Yo, that's ET right there, baby. Of course, finally, we get to watch LeBron James in year five as we watch the Cavaliers take a one point lead. And remember, make sure to comment down below who you guys want to see next as our third GOAT candidate. Kobe on the other end gets blocked. We're down by one point. I do not want, there's no way. LeBron James posts up bricks. That was a horrible shot. We have another chance to win this game. Kobe drives. He cannot make a shot, but Pau Gasol is there to save us yet again. We love this man. What does four plus four equal? Greatness. LeBron James can win this one for them. He's missing, he's ice cold now. And then makes it. It's his shot. It's his shot. Yes. 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 But yes, Kobe Bryant with the game winner against LeBron James. That is honestly one of the most iconic moments we could have asked for in this GOAT series. Absolutely awesome. Hopefully we just close this out. Boston wins. It is Kobe Bryant who is the hero and we just dismantle the Cavaliers right onto the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Charlotte Bobcats who remarkably have become good. This is one of the bigger shocks in this scenario. Of course though, nothing in this is easy at all. And we are jumping into game one where we watch Andrew Bynum give us a lead. And then there is our man, Kobe Bryant, making it a four point game. He is stepping up for us. He makes both free throws. He has 53 points in game one of the Eastern conference finals a legendary performance and there we go taking that dub nothing at all is easy though we're into game two and in overtime there is kobe launching a one-handed wonder shot that connects five point lead kobe makes another three year five kobe is different because there we finally get the dunk we've been waiting for the signature moment man that feels good that feels good and bringing out the rooms we have an eastern conference finals sweep you gotta love it but on the other end the clippers were just as dominant they swept the western conference finals which means it's our last real test gilbert arenas in his prime a man trying to write his own story as it appears locker room situations have been turned off in this scenario and gilbert has been playing incredible so have we though and game one is a blowout while game two brings us a highlight reel as it's never close at all all. Tyson Chandler was especially dominant again. He was, at least up until now, possibly the game-saving trade of the scenario. We win game three. The brooms are ready. I've got one in hand because I don't have an applicant yet. Can we sweep the NBA Finals in year five? Hopefully this is our final face cam as we watch what could be a sweep of the NBA Finals. We do need a broom man to submit an application. Clippers have a chance to take the lead on the other end. There is Gilbert Arenas. As he takes the pick, that is wide open. That could have been really bad. Other end, please give the ball to Kobe. We do. He drives on Rip Hamilton and feeds none other than the meal ticket. Pau Gasol, two point lead. Gilbert takes a wild shot over Jose Calderon, who is the best defender in NBA history. And Kobe can put this one away with 40 seconds left spinning. Why? 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 Clippers can tie the game. Makes the first, makes the second. 33 seconds left. Game four, NBA Finals. Boston Celtics can sweep. Kobe gets doubled, this is tough. Shane Battier floats through the air like a hero. Two point lead on the other end. Gilbert Arenas has the ball. He has a chance to take a lead. Misses again. Up by five, five seconds left. The only question is, will Gilbert Arenas Join in our championship celebration. That Look at Jose Calderon. Man, he was emotional. Down on the knees immediately. But we got, we got Gilbert Arenas. We really got him. Yo. Clean sweep in the NBA finals in our final year. The Boston Celtics are your champions in a sweep. We officially need a broom guy on our staff as Kobe finishes his 2000s GOAT scenario run with a 
bang. Overall, looking at Kobe's success, yes, Steph outdid him in MVPs and in titles. However, two MVPs and three titles in your first five seasons in the NBA, I will say is pretty solid. Also, if we compare, we can see that Kobe did outdo Steph in some of those scoring numbers in the all-time leaderboard. We're very happy for Kobe for that. Other than that, though, if you are still around, thank you so much for supporting. Please comment down below who you want to see next in this GOAT race and what era, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, or 80s, actually. We are on the road to take down NBA players in this sub race. We will take down Anthony Black on this journey. So please subscribe and turn on post notifications so that we can do it together. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.